This is chapter 19 of the Nowhere Emporium and it is entitled Missing. Mr Silver vanished the day after Ellie's birthday ball. It was a Sunday and the sky was heavy with black clouds and thunder. Papa has never missed opening time before. Ellie stood at the window, tapping her foot on the floor. Something's wrong. Daniel had to agree. In the few months he had been a part of Mr Silver's world, he'd never once seen his boss open the shop so much as a second late. I wonder if he... Daniel's voice trailed away. Something lay on the floor under Mr Silver's desk. He picked it up and fanned through its many pages. The Book of Wonders. Ellie, have you ever known your papa to leave this lying around? Ellie edged towards him. She reached out trembling fingers and touched the book. It looks like it's been... it's been burnt or something. She was right. The ends of some of the pages were blackened and Daniel found a cluster of shriveled pages where wonders had been scorched away. As they examined the book, a loose scrap of paper fell out. Ellie grabbed it. It's part of a note from Papa. What? said Daniel. What's it say? Let me see. He craned over her shoulder and read. Dearest Ellie and Daniel Holmes, I am sorry that I could not be there to give you this message in person, but time is against us. What you are about to read is frightening, but please don't panic. For reasons I do not have time to explain, the Emporium is in danger. Worse than that, it is becoming dangerous. I have a plan. If you follow it to the letter, you should be fine. You'll be safe in the shop front. Stay there whenever possible. And when the time comes, you must. The message ended abruptly. That's it, said Daniel. That can't be it. He picked up the paper, stared at the ragged edge where the rest of the message had obviously been burned away. Brilliant. Whatever burned the book destroyed the note as well. And your dad's plan. Ellie was staring at the message, shaking her head. What's happened? What does he mean? That stuff about the Emporium being dangerous. Where is he, Daniel? Daniel pointed to the coat stand. Look, his coat is still hanging up. I don't think he's gone outside. Maybe we should just wait here, like he says. I've ignored his orders before, and it didn't end well. Ellie shook her head. He only wanted us to stay here so we could follow his plan. And we don't know what that is, do we? We have to find him and tell him we're in the dark. He's probably relying on us, Daniel. Mr Silver's apartments were the logical place to begin the search. They found the door open a fraction and a labyrinth of grand chambers lay in wait, each made entirely from books. As he searched, Daniel was distracted time and again by the strange and wonderful surroundings in which Mr Silver chose to live. He found Ellie in a garden of books under a huge tree blossoming with intricately folded pages. He's not here, she said, and she kicked the trunk of the tree, shaking pages to the paper floor. Maybe we should go back to the shop, said Daniel. But his note made it sound like he won't be back any time soon, didn't it? Ellie said. He's so infuriating sometimes with his secrets. Why didn't he just tell us what's going on? So we just keep looking without a plan said Daniel. How many rooms in the Emporium? A thousand. How are we supposed to check them all? Thought flared to life in his mind. Search parties. The lobby of the Nowhere Hotel was packed with impatient performers and vendors, eager to start work. This was the way of things. Every day the staff would gather dressed to the nines in black and gold, checking pocket watches and timepieces until the glorious moment when twilight cloaked the world outside and the doors of the Emporium opened. Excuse me. Sorry. Daniel pushed and squirmed through the pack, looking for Caleb and Anya. Ouch. Watch it. Hey, there they are. Ellie, I found them. The fire breather and snake charmer were standing together, as they always seemed to be. Caleb stood a full head taller than everyone apart from Anya, and was holding court amid a group of vendors. So, out there, in the real world, not only is the moon 400 times smaller than the sun, it is 400 times closer, so they appear the same size in the sky. And when they meet, the moon covers the sun completely. Day turns to night. Not a bit of magic is used. Now that is a wonder. Anya, who looked like she might fall asleep at any minute, caught sight of Daniel. Daniel! Ellie! Caleb broke off from his story. What brings you two around here? And what's all this about? 
he asked, pointing to the crowd. We're late opening up. Never been late before. Papa's missing, said Ellie. We found his book of wonders in the shop, all burned and bashed, and this note. She handed the note to Caleb, whose face became grave. Mm -hmm. Missing, he asked. At opening time, he exchanged glasses with Anya. That isn't right. No, 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 won't do at all. Will you ask the rest of the staff to search with us, said Daniel. It would give us a better chance of finding him. Caleb scratched the stubble on his square chin. I don't know, he said gravely. What if he turns up? What if he suddenly opens the doors and none of us are anywhere to be seen because we're off search in the Emporium? Read the note, said Daniel. Doesn't sound like he'll be opening the Emporium, does it? He says it's dangerous. We need to find him, Caleb. We've got to know what's going on and what his plan is. The Emporium's in danger. It means we're all in danger too, added Ellie. I don't think Papa would abandon us. I think he's in here somewhere. We're worried about him, Caleb. Anya said, it does seem to be an emergency, Caleb. What if he's ill or has fallen and banged his head? Or what if one of his wonders is misbehaving? She turned to Daniel. It happens very rarely. Doors are left open. Things escape. Last time, it was flying pencils. Very sharp. Caleb gave a thoughtful nod. That was an interesting day. He shook his big head. But I'm sorry, we can't help. Rules are rules. We were created for one purpose. We must be ready always to take our posts. Ellie looked crestfallen, but Daniel was getting an idea. I can make it worth your while, he said. I could smuggle you something in from the outside world, eh? Come on, there must be something you want. Caleb peered down at him. Are you offering me a bribe, Daniel Holmes? A bribe, said Daniel, his eyes wide. Not me, just a gift. A way of saying thanks. Caleb mulled this over. He scratched his big chin. Very well, I want a kitten. A fluffy one. He shook Daniel's hand, then turned to the rest of the lobby. Attention, we have a job to do. Word spread quickly through the lobby. Mr Silver was missing. Everyone was chattering and gossiping, agreeing that the loss of their leader was the worst disaster that could possibly happen. What will we do without him? We're lost. This place won't last a week. And so the search was on. There were many members of staff, many pairs of eyes and ears. They scoured the emporium's catacomb of passages and doorways. They searched through vaults and tunnels in a basement that seemed to be mined into the earth. They climbed the very highest staircases where the air was thin and cold and filled with crystal flakes of ice. They even rediscovered a long lost section of the Emporium, buried underneath a rainforest that had spilled from an open door. There was no trace of Mr Silver. To add to the worry, many search parties returned with news of strange cracks appearing on the Emporium walls, white lines crawling over black bricks like jagged spider trails. In some places it was worse than others. There was even a rumour that one of the corridors had collapsed. It's as if he has vanished, said Caleb, after yet another search party had reported no success. He clicked his fingers. Gone. Poof. Like that. You very sure he hasn't left the shop? He wouldn't leave the Emporium without the book, said Ellie. It's practically part of him. And I'm sorry to say, I'm stumped. Daniel's mind was ticking. It just didn't add up. Why would Silver vanish? The Emporium was in trouble, as his note suggested, and the cracks in the walls confirmed that Mr Silver would be the last to leave. Daniel knew that. And why had he dumped the book? Wait a minute, he said. When we got to New York, Mr Silver finally found his treasure, whatever he'd been searching for. And now, a few days later, he's gone. That can't be a coincidence, can it? But what was the treasure, said Ellie? Was it something dangerous, and why would he disappear with it? Daniel shook his head. There's only one way to find out. I guess I'm heading back to Bizarre's Bazaar.